Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to a talk on degree apprenticeships. So we're here from Pearson College London today. Uh, I'm Alistair and I work in the student recruitment team and I'm joined today with two of my colleagues, Emma and Matilda, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, so my name's Emma and I'm a current degree apprentice uh, in my third and final year and I also work as a conversion marketing coordinator at Pearson College London. Hiya, I'm Matilda, also a third year current degree apprentice at Pearson College London and I currently work as an events coordinator um, for the college as well. Great, thank you. So on the next slide is just uh, a little overview of what we're going to cover today. And I want to emphasise that although I'm going to go over the first couple of slides, today is more about Emma and Matilda being able to talk to you about their experiences as a degree apprentice and kind of give you some top tips and insights into that. So I'm going to start with a little bit about Pearson College London and who we are, because ultimately there is a degree part to being a degree apprentice. So I'm going to cover that little that little bit. And then we're going to go on to kind of what is a degree apprenticeship? Is it right for me? Kind of which way to go a degree apprenticeship versus a traditional degree? How to apply and opportunities that we currently have and then some next steps. So I'm going to hand over kind of a, after the first five minutes and let Matilda and Emma go through that with you. Now, please do put any questions in the chat today. We'll be happy to answer them at the end. We have left some time so we can go through and answer all of your questions. Great. OK, so Pearson College London. So some of you may not have heard of us. Some of you may have heard of us. Some of you may have done some applications already uh, in terms of kind of what we are, who we are. So we're all about kind of transforming that higher education space. So we're part of a FTSE 100 company. And that means studying with us, you're immersed within a real business. So Pearson itself um, owns Edexcel and BTEC. So when you're studying with us, you're in kind of the heart of business from day one. And the whole ethos is that employers influence all elements of our degrees. So the concept right the way through to individual modules. So it's not just that textbook degree like at some other places. Um, with us, you're going to get a lot more of kind of that practical approach as well. And the employers influencing the different modules as we go. There's also a lot of work integrated learning as well. So there's things like guaranteed internships within the degrees and the opportunities for students to gain experience during the studies and during the degrees. And the thing that really kind of then sets us aside is that employability statistics. So 93% of degree graduates in work or further study within six months. So just to kind of wrap that all up and to kind of say, why am I saying that? Because we're, we're here about apprenticeships today. Well, it's because Pearson College London is where you're going to be studying. So it's that whole ethos that will be kind of covering the, the degree apprenticeships that we have to offer. Next slide. Great, thank you. So just kind of following on from that employability statistics, in terms of those graduate outcomes, we are one of the top 20 institutions in the UK for kind of graduates entering full-time employment. And this is talking from our main undergraduate degree programs. So obviously that degree, the degree apprenticeship programs that we have are also giving you even more employability skills as well on top of that. Next slide, please. So I've put this slide up just to demonstrate a few other apprenticeship programs that started in England in 2017 and 18. And I just put this up here to highlight that even though we're going to be talking about business management degree apprenticeships today, there are lots of other sectors that you can get involved with apprenticeships. So although we can only talk about the Pearson College London degree apprenticeship schemes, the Pearson Business School schemes, there are a lot of skills that Matilda and Emma are going to talk about today that are really transferable to other apprenticeship schemes and also other degree apprenticeship schemes with other institutions and other companies. So please, if so far you've been thinking business is not for me, Pearson Business School is maybe not for me or Pearson College London, there's going to be a lot of skills that Matilda and Emma that are going to talk about that should be really, really useful for you thinking about going into the apprenticeship space. Next slide. 
Okay, at this point, I'm going to hand over to Emma and Matilda to kind of give you more of that apprentice approach to degree apprenticeships. Great, thank you, Alistair. Um, so yeah, we'll explain to you a little bit more about degree apprenticeships. Um, so obviously they are slightly different from um, other apprenticeships. Obviously it comes with the degree as well. Um, and basically it allows you to combine working with studying at the same time. Um, and in addition, you'll be earning a salary, which is a great benefit of our degree apprenticeships. Um, and effectively you'll be spending 80% of your time working and 20% studying. Uh, and Matilda is going to go into a bit more detail about the key kind of elements about these degree apprenticeships. Yeah, thank you, Emma. So to give a little overview of kind of how um, the degree apprenticeships with Pearson College London are structured. Um, so this is how me and Emma kind of see them, obviously different places structure them completely differently sometimes. Um, but normally you'll be working four days a week so in our case you work monday to thursday um for your company in a full-time job role and then on a friday um so one day a week you study for your business management uh, ba honors degree um alongside that obviously as emma just said you get a salary um which is always what attracts a lot of people to the um schemes and these can range between around 14 to twenty four thousand pounds a year it completely depends on the company that you're working for and there is always opportunities within those companies to grow. So it doesn't mean your salary would be the same at the start of your apprenticeship to the end of your apprenticeship. In terms of the tuition fees for your degree, um, these are funded by your employer. So it's not something that you have to cover, which is a, another great bonus to these schemes. Um, you're really um, graduating with a degree, but completely debt free, which is an awesome opportunity that not many people have. Um, and it also gives you um, the opportunity to build a, a really great seat during your degree. So um, you've got that work experience. If you're then looking to apply for other jobs um, later on, you've already got the experience to go off. And this slide um, just shows a couple of examples of some of the places that Pearson College London work with on apprenticeship schemes. So there's some larger companies which many have heard of, so L'Oreal, Mondelez, which um, own Cadbury's and Transport for London. And there's also some smaller companies um, like Baxter Story, which some people may not have heard of, although they still have really great opportunities. Um, and it's a really interesting industry to work with um, as well. So this slide is a bit heavy, heavy worded, um, but we kind of wanted to give a good insight into what a degree apprentice does on a week to week basis. It's quite different probably from a degree student and how they structure their week. Um, so myself and Emma have just put together kind of a rough typical week as a degree apprentice um, and what we do. I think there's always the cliche that no two weeks are the same and that is definitely true. So we've kind of tried to make this as um, relevant as possible on what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So in terms of my role as an events coordinator, I mean it's changed a lot recently since going online, so a lot of what I do is online um, events now. Um, but yeah, I obviously replying to emails on a weekly basis, involved in a lot of meetings, um, and that gives you great experience just hearing what other people, if they're higher up in the company, sometimes have to say, even if you're not too involved in a meeting, sometimes it can be really interesting just to um, kind of understand different areas of the business. Um, and it, the kind of phrase always learning that Pearson News is always a great opportunity, uh, a great kind of statistic here to show um, that we are always, always learning, even in meetings. Um, and yeah, just ad hoc tasks, obviously running events when I have them online um, but I've got quite a heavy communication role so I do spend a lot of my time emailing people involving them in the events that we're running um, and things like that and then obviously on a Friday I attend university and um, currently all our seminars are virtual so these are online um, and then on a weekend I try and keep my Saturdays free a lot of people say, how do you manage your time as a degree apprentice? I try and keep my Saturdays free just to enjoy other things and then do the rest of my university work on a Sunday. But I'm sure Emma has a completely different approach to this and I'll let her give a bit of insight into how her week might be different. 
Yeah, so um, I will say as well, um, when I was putting this together, it was interesting to see um, how my role has also changed. So um, Matilda and myself, uh, we're both in our third year. Um, so this is our third year kind of um, in these roles. And it has changed a lot since I first started. Obviously, as I'm gaining more experience, more autonomy, um, I'm receiving new tasks, new challenges. Um, so like Matilda says, it is always evolving, always developing, and we are always learning. Um, so I structure my week um, a little bit differently. I tend to um, spread my uni work out throughout the week. Um, so I try and keep um, both days of my weekend free where I can. Um, so obviously it's a lot easier now um, working from home. Um, I don't have such a long commute. So I tend to do some of my assignment work um, and watch some of my pre-recorded lectures either in the mornings, um, during my lunch break, or when I finish work at five o'clock. Um, but in terms of my... Um, my work throughout the week. Um, so I'm a conversion marketing coordinator uh, and this means I get involved in a lot of the different marketing activities that we do at the college. Um, so it can be anything from emails that are sent out before our events um, and various things like that. Um, so I often work with suppliers to send out um, mail outs to our students um, and various other things like um, writing blogs, uh, maintaining different communication platforms. Um, I've also um, over the last year or so, um, been given the opportunity to work with our social media team. Um, so opportunities do always um, come up for other areas for you to get experience in. Um, and it's been really fun being a part of that um, and helping create graphics for our social media pages, um, things like that. So that's really fun, um, nice thing to get involved with. Um, and then kind of on Thursdays, um, that's like our end of the week. Um, so that's when I'll tend to um, wrap up, schedule any emails out, um, kind of um, schedule anything, um, update any web pages and that kind of stuff. Um, and like Matilda said, on Fridays, we have our live online seminars. Um, so I try and get all of my work done um, in the week before. So it's all fresh in my mind. Um, we also have study hours as well. So on a Thursday morning, um, I might take a few of my study hours um, and just prepare ready for the Friday and then try and keep my weekends free. But um, it is that way of trying to balance your time um, and it is different for everyone. So you eventually fall into a routine that works best for you. Um, you will kind of get used to that new process and, and how you work with everything. Um, so moving on a little bit now about social life. So quite a lot of people tend to say, um, you know, you're doing all this work, all this uni work. Do you still get a social life um, and get to experience life as a student? Uh, yes, you do. Um, and like where I said, um, how I keep my weekends free, um, that's really important to me because um, previously working part time jobs um, alongside A levels, I didn't always have um, weekends free to see friends and family. Um, so I like to kind of keep that time to socialise a bit more. Um, but it, it is also important to mention that you'll be in the same boat as other apprentices. So they'll also have responsibilities of their day job um, and will be doing uni as well. So you're not going to be the only person doing this. Um, there will be a large network of others in the exact same boat as you. Um, and it's nice to have that support and nice to have other people who can relate to your situation. And if you have got a particularly heavy workload that week, um, so it's nice to kind of have those people to chat to um, and have kind of along alongside with you. Yeah, and to follow on from that, I just wanted to also talk about um, the relationship, obviously, that you would have the opportunity to have with um, Pearson Business School and Pearson College London. Obviously, as Alistair mentioned, um, it's somewhere where we offer full time degrees. And so as an apprentice, you're have the opportunity to be involved in that full-time um, degree student experience as well and um, so you're able to join any clubs and societies that the college have any events that they run so freshers week um, any social christmas parties or anything like that obviously it's completely optional but the, the option is there if you really want to get involved um, I also last year had the opportunity um, to be on the Pearson College London student association um, as the degree apprentice representative and that was a really great way to just get involved with the um, full-time students get to know a lot more people when you're then walking around the college you seem to know an awful lot more people once you've just had that um, opportunity to interact a bit more um, and it gives you the opportunity to kind of have your say and give the apprentice out um, kind of look if you want there to be an event or something like that you've got the opportunity to 
organise and help run um, things, social activities for everyone else. Um, and also, obviously, you can um, you have the opportunity to live in halls. You would have to pay for that out of your salary, but the opportunity is there. And I know a lot of apprentices do. Um, I don't think me or me and Emma don't, but um, I did move up to London um, when I started my apprenticeship, um, and it's been great to kind of have that social life of living in London. I came from quite a rural area, so to be able to kind of go out and socialise um, and live the city life is um, great. And equally at the same time as well. Um, so um, before when we could um, go in face to face, um, I would commute in um, and there is still a lot of students and apprentices who um, commute as well. So um, whatever you decide to do, whether it is um, moving into student halls or moving into London, um, there's going to be people from all different areas and all different um, paths. So um, you're not going to be the only one. Um, whatever you kind of decide to do, there'll be people um, choosing all different kinds of options. Great, so now we've spoken a little bit more about um, degree apprenticeships and what they entail. I guess the next kind of question um, for you guys to ask yourselves is, is it the right pathway for you? Um, there's a few different um, areas here that I just wanted to talk through. So obviously you'll be juggling um, studying your degree and working alongside that. So one of the key things to point out is it's really important to have good time management and prioritization skills. Um, and this is something that employers will particularly look for in the application process. So if you have any experience of time management from a part time job or working towards a deadline um, for any of your assignments, it's really good to kind of showcase that as it is really important, um, even if it is something that you haven't mastered yet. Um, like I was saying earlier, you will eventually fall into that pattern um, and get used to your new working week and balancing everything out. But it is a really important skill to have. Um, a few other things to point out as well. Um, the application processes can be quite long and can be quite tricky. Um, so I would recommend um, make sure you put some time aside, go through all of your applications. Um, now, a lot of the degree apprenticeship applications can be similar to if you're applying for a job, for example. Um, so it can require you to make multiple applications. Um, it can be quite tricky, you know, making sure your CVs are updated, um, you're filling out all of the forms online. Um, so do just be cautious of that. Make sure you've got the time and also the resources. It's, it's going to be so beneficial if you have um, friends, family, even teachers or careers advisors at school that can read through anything for you and um, give you any tips and advice. That's really helpful as well. Um, and like we've been saying, um, it ultimately is a different university experience, but there are still the options for student life um, and everything as well. So it's a question of weighing up what might be right for you. Um, are you happy to have more responsibilities of um, doing a job um, four days a week or would you be more inclined to um, take the traditional full time student route and um, where you have much more time on your hands, much more time to concentrate on your studies? Um, and it's just it's just a different experience, really. Um, and then I guess if you are still unsure, um, you can always head over to our website. Um, one of our um, apprentices who she's recently just graduated. Um, she created a degree apprenticeship quiz um, to assess what pathway might be the right choice for you. Um, so if you are unsure, I definitely recommend heading over to our website, taking a look at that, because um, it can be really helpful in deciding um, what option would be best for you. Great. Um, and I'm just going to kind of briefly go over this slide as a lot of it, I think we've already covered anyway. But as Emma just said, um, deciding whether to do a degree apprenticeship or just a traditional degree is completely your choice. And it's something you've just got to weigh up on what's, what's right for you um, and what you think you would be better suited to. Um, so this just kind of gives some ideas on what it would be how, how there's differences between the degree um, apprenticeship and the traditional degree. So one thing we don't think we have pointed out yet is holidays. So obviously on a traditional degree, you have lovely long summers um, and Easter and Christmas holidays, just like you would at school. Um, and that's something that a lot of students really love if they want to travel or things like that. Um, they really love those long breaks um, in order to, to do other activities. 
obviously on a degree apprenticeship route you have a full-time job so you don't have that luxury unfortunately um, and you only have the annual leave days that your employer has allocated you they said they had 28 days which might be approximately what you'd get a year and um, obviously you have a complete choice on when you take those days but you also do have to attend all your seminars um, on a Friday so you can't book two weeks off of holiday um, during term time you would still need to attend your Friday university so it's just something to consider if you really want to have other opportunities um, degree apprenticeship might not be best for you you might prefer a traditional degree and um, so you can do all those other activities um, and also a good one to um, mention is the bottom one so obviously through a traditional degree you'd apply through UCAS um, and that's that centralized system one application and you can apply for obviously five different universities um, with the degree apprenticeship route as Emma mentioned it's a bit more time consuming and each different apprenticeship um, that you look to apply for will need a separate application form and it will be a completely separate application process so it's again something you need to consider if you've got the time um, in order to put put the time and effort into applying for these different schemes or if you'd rather just stick to one application process um, and go through um, the traditional university choice. Okay, so moving on now to the entry requirements. So um, this is what we have at Pearson College London. And obviously degree apprenticeship entry requirements can vary um, depending um, with other different providers. But I'll go through um, what we do at the college. Um, so there's a few different um, options here for you to read through. Um, so firstly, you must be eligible to study an apprenticeship in the UK. Um, you need to be 18 or over at the start of your programme. Um, to have completed any studies that you're currently undertaking um, and then this is this is the most important one at the bottom here um, so we require um, GCSE English uh, Literature or Language and GCSE Maths at grade C or grade 4 um, functional skills level 2 English and Maths level 2 at a pass or equivalent qualifications um, as, as approved so do bear that in mind um, when you're making your application and a lot of the process um, will also be reliant on um, interview stages and different workshops, um, which Matilda will go into in a bit more detail. Um, but there is more to it than just the initial application. And um, so we'll, there will be other stages for you to take into consideration as well. Yeah, so this um, infographic just gives an outline of what a uh, application process for a degree apprenticeship at Pearson College London um, could involve um, and this is the current process that we have open at the minute so to quickly run through it um, obviously the first one is visitor so you could come to one of our open days or we've also got a specific degree apprenticeship event um, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute um, which you could attend if you wanted to get a bit more details about degree apprenticeships with us um, and then if you decide you're interested it would be a compl uh, completing an online application form via our website and there is a little bit of a mistake we've just realized in this infographic um, it's not through UCAS track to just say underneath through UCAS track um, that's not actually correct um, but it is just completing an online application form on our website um, and all the questions will be on that application form I think it asks for a short um, personal statement, which you can then link into your any extracurricular activities you do. So I remember when I was doing mine, I I, liked, I linked it a lot to my part-time job I had at the time um, and other activities I did out of the classroom. I think that's something that as kind of a, a tip I would say is something that employers really look for is kind of what you do outside of the classroom, not necessarily just everything you do. Um, if you're doing your A-levels or BTEC qualifications, they want to know what else you do in your other time. Um, then if you're successful with that stage, you'll be invited to a core abilities test, which is an online test, um, very simple numeracy based test. Um, and then the, the professional workshop, which is also the final stage in the pre-screening application process. And this um, currently is taking place online and it will involve a online written task, a critical thinking test and also the uh, an, an interview with one of our academic team 
So this would be the first interview um, you would probably take. Um, and it may be your first interview in, you've ever had, especially online. Um, again, tips for this are just to be yourself. I think me and Emma both, I mean, I'd never completed an interview in this way before I applied for this. So they're not expecting you to be amazing and know every single thing. But it's just about being yourself, being honest, and kind of showing them what you've got and what you could really, really why you want to um, complete the scheme you've applied for. If you then pass all those stages successfully, um, you will then be put into a kind of a pool of students um, and have the opportunity um, to be invited to be put forward for any schemes when they become available with one of our employers. So, for example, if a employer came forward and they wanted um, five apprentices or something for specific roles, you'd get information about that if we thought you were suitable and you'd be have the opportunity to be put forward for that uh, role. Um, and then the company will pick a shortlist and then you'd be if you were accepted on that shortlist, you'd be invited to the company assessment, which can take place in different forms. Some companies just do interviews. I just had a final interview, but I know some companies had full assessment days. Um, so yeah, it depends where you where you apply to and what company um, you're um, being put forward to, depending on what that stage would entail. And then obviously, if you're successful, um, it would be about getting ready to start um, and what you need to prepare in order to start your apprenticeship. Um, so this is um, a quick summary um, of the application timeline in terms of dates. So we have um, two intakes per year, one in September and another one in January. Great. And this is just a quick little summary of what we've kind of discussed. And Pearson College London currently have their Chartered Management Degree Apprenticeship Scheme open for application. So this just gives a short overview of everything we've kind of gone over um, and what you would need if you wanted to apply to start a role in this September. Great, and then just a quick summary. Um, so alongside ourselves on our website, um, we have a vacancy waiting list, which I would 100% recommend signing up to. Um, it's super useful um, to receive emails whenever um, kind of updates and anything comes available. Um, but as well as our website, there's a few other ones listed on here as well, um, which are really helpful resources that you guys can take a look at um, if degree apprenticeships are something that you're um, considering um, looking into. Um, so you can see here a few other ones listed. Um, do take a picture of this slide or um, take a note of some of these sites um, just for future reference if you're not aware of them already. And then just a few next steps. So um, if you do want to get in contact with us directly, um, we've got our email and phone number on here as well. Um, and you can also um, chat to myself um, and some other of our current apprentices on our website. Um, if you just um, go on the link, it's chat to current students. Um, so you can speak to apprentices, like I said, as well as um, full-time students as well, um, if that's another option that you're looking into. Great, and just to kind of wrap our talk up before we go on to questions, um, I did mention that we have a separate degree apprenticeship event coming up, and this is our degree apprentice discovery day, um, which is taking place on the 18th of February, so in two weeks time. Um, and it's um, an online event where we'll be going into all the details about degree apprenticeships. There'll be an, a workshop um, where you can get some application tips um, from one of our personal apprentice mentors. And we've also got other current apprentices and our industry partner, L'Oreal, who will also be involved um, speaking about their schemes that they're running at the minute. And on this next slide is a QR code. So if you are interested and want to sign up, you can scan that QR code on your phones right now um, and it will take you to the, straight to the uh, registration page for the event. And I'm going to leave that up um, while we answer some questions, I think. Hello, hopefully you can all, can you all hear me? Yeah. Hello, I'm Lizzie. Yeah. Lovely to join you all. Um, I'm from Wake to My Apprenticeship. 
case if everyone's wondering who is she. Um, so thank you so much for, for that. And it was really, really good because a lot of the questions I was watching, you then started to talk about uh, and, and answer them. So I've kind of been going through and, and picking out any ones that um, I think would be really, really valuable. So we've got about five minutes. Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you. Really, really insightful. And I, I want to kick it off with getting a bit of a feel from, from both you, Emma, and Matilda. When you think back to when you applied and you're in the a point of a lot of people that are actually listening to this thinking, what do I do? What was it that really made you think Pearson College London, that's the one that I want to go for? I think for me, it was um, the job roles that were available. Um, it wasn't something I'd kind of thought about too much and what I'd want to go um, into. Um, and then when I saw a job role in events, I thought, no, actually, that is that is something I'd really be interested in. Um, and I was someone who a normal degree route wasn't really for me. I have kind of put off my UCAS applications and was thinking, no, I, I want something else. Um, so when this opportunity came up, I was like, I, have to, I just have to apply for it, really. Um, and yeah, it was worth it <laughs> no, that's really in the end. Yeah. And I bet it feels quite a long time ago now, as you said, you're in your third, yeah. you've gone through it all. Um, Emma, what would you say from your side? Would you agree with that or, or anything else to add? Yeah, I think mine was um, pretty similar, to be honest. Um, I think I, I loved learning and I, I loved everything I did with my A-levels, but at that point, I was like, I really want to get into the working world, um, see what it's all about, gain some real experience. At the same time, I was like, I love learning so much and I love doing um, my business management A-level. Um, and I thought, oh, it'd be, it'd be perfect if I could do both at the same time. Then I found out about degree apprenticeships and it was just um, the, the perfect opportunity for me. Yeah, I think I, I honestly think they're an amazing opportunity and, and you both going through it talking about how you got the degree and the work. It just seems like such a brilliant, yeah, brilliant mixture of, of, of the, you know, what a lot of people are thinking, what do I do, either work or university? You've got you've got both. Um, and I just wanted to pick up on um, what you just said there, Emma. So um, a lot of people are thinking, uh, if I do do it, what, what does this mean for me? So it'd be really good just to hear from from um, from your side. What skills do you think you've developed through doing your degree apprenticeship? Um, I mean, it, it honestly has been life changing in the skills I've made. I, I don't think I would have gained all the skills I have had I have studied um, a full time degree or had I have gone straight into work. Um, I think like um, we were saying earlier about time management and prioritisation um, is something it did take me a while to get used to. Um, but I think that's something I've really kind of um, nailed by now. Um, it, it's, it's really important and so useful for um, whatever career you go into afterwards. Um, I say so many other things. There's a lot of um, business systems and things I've used um, in relation to my um, job in marketing um, that I feel that I might might not have picked up. Um, so a few things such as Salesforce and Pardot, key systems that we use, and I now have um, an understanding in how to use them and developing that skill over the three years, um, which I think is really important to then um, go out in, into the working world and develop my career in marketing. Um, will be so useful to have that fundamental knowledge yeah definitely and i i guess that you're going to have so many more years of experience and being in 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 the employer world and, and working on those systems as you said that other university students might not have that if they go to uni so really really good uh, good reason um, and matilda from from your side it'd be really good to hear a bit about the work-life balance because it's really interesting to hear that four days a week that you're working and then you've got your day when you're going into to, to uni uh you know how how do you how do you work that how does that feel <laughs> i can I, i'll be honest sometimes it's it is a lot um and i think that's the kind of thing you've got to weigh up there are weeks where i think oh god this is a busy week and it's something you kind of you do have to manage and if you're going into it you've got to be prepared that there will be weeks where you will be in effect nearing deadlines working seven days a week um and that's kind of the reality of it that you just kind of have to accept that that is the way it will be that obviously there's times where you can take your weekends off and enjoy um spending time with your friends and family and things but there are times where you do have to put the work in um but i think you just always have to then look at the end goal that's what i do and think well what am i getting out of this um and how how good 
um, the end result will be once you've then finished your degree. But it's definitely not an easy route if if you wanted to go out partying on a Tuesday night. It's not the one. Um, compared to a lot of my university friends, I'm probably a lot of a, a bit of a grandma these days, <laughs> in bed early um, and getting my sleep. But yeah. <laughs> Oh, I bet, I bet they'll love, they're probably all laughing at you saying that. <laughs> they could hear you. Um, awesome. Yeah, but that's so, it's it's so good to hear it from from you though as well, the, the real, the reality, because I think a big part of this is people understanding what the options are and what that means. Um, so that's really, really good. And I guess one final question, so we're literally going to have to wrap up. So very quickly, um, could I just get from both of you, what's been your favourite thing doing your degree apprenticeship? So Emma, what's been your favourite thing? I think my favourite thing has probably had to be um, when um, John Fallon, the CEO of Pearson, came in to speak to students um, and it was, it was just so insightful and just one of example of the many opportunities um, you can get from not only being a student at Pearson College but also um, being on the degree apprenticeship scheme as well. Oh, wow, amazing. And Matilda from your side? so hard to pick one um i think just the experience in general um and just being able to have um like the respect of doing a full-time job and you're not looked down upon you're not just doing the photocopying like some people might think just to be kind of 20 years old and sat in meetings with people who have been in the industry for years and you're really respected and just have that opportunity to put your opinions out there and put your kind of thoughts on a situation I think that's really invaluable fantastic well thank you both and, and well done sounds like you're doing a, an incredible job and you've definitely inspired me and you've probably inspired a lot of people in the audience so thank you so much and to Alistair as well for uh, for all of the stuff that you said at the beginning really really good and um, I just want to say thanks if you've got any more questions you did there's a lot of questions of the audience please head over to the booth because there's some time and um, for you to ask questions in the booth so without further ado thank you so much and um, we'll speak to you all soon Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.